based on nanostructure enabled biological and biomedical sensing and detection. I'm Long Kui from University, Iowa State University, USA. So in this presentation, uh, I have following items. First, I'd like to uh, briefly des describe the motivation. Then I'm going to introduce a type of uh, nanostructured material, aluminum allotic aluminum oxide, also called the AO, and how to fabricate this AO micro patterns on chip. Uh, after that, I'm going to talk about AO-based fluorescence biosensing and imaging. Uh, then I'm going to talk about AO-enabled, label-free bi biodetection. Uh, finally, I'm going to summarize my talk. So as we know that the typical biomolecule size in the range of nanometers to micrometers, uh, given their uh, tiny size, the transducing signal is very weak for biodetection. In order to detect those weak signals from such small biomolecules, we need the sensors at micro or nano scale. In terms of the biosensing technologies, uh, we can roughly uh, divided them into two categories. Label, one is the labeled technology. In this kind of technology, uh, some sorts of labels, for example, the fluorescent dyes, uh, have to be uh, attached to the biomolecules for the detection. Uh, it has been widely used with high sensitivity, uh, but sometimes it's very time-consuming time and expensive procedure. Uh, for ultra low concentration of biomolecules, the sensitivity still needs to be improved. Another category is the label free uh, biosensing technology. In this uh, case, uh, no labels uh, are needed to be attached to the biomolecules for the detection. The micro nano sensors detect the molecules directly. One example is the silicon nanowire based uh, biosensor. Um, so this type of sensor have a simple procedure for the detection. Uh, we can achieve the rapid detection with high sensitivity. But uh, <clears throat> in most cases, the nanostructures have to be fabricated to use the expensive fabrication process. Uh, and sometimes the testing setup is uh, quite complicated. So as we see that technologies, they have limitations. The natural question is, do we have nanostructures or nano materials that could address the issues for both technologies? The answer is yes. One type of nanomaterial called the allotic aluminum oxide, AO, can be used to address or mitigate the limitations of both technologies. First, the AO can be fabricated by a uh, you know, very simple electrochemical process in a cost-effective manner. Uh, the nanopores in the AO film uh, and the interspacing between the nanopores can be adjusted by uh, changing the allodization parameters. So we actually developed uh, fabrication process here show from step one to seven to fabricate the micro pattern the AO on a glass substrate. So use this kind of uh, fabrication process, we can fabricate micro pattern the AO with different shapes. For example, micro line, micro square, and even uh, gill micro patterns on chip. If we look at this, uh, the surface, of the AO's uh, patterns. Uh, if we use the one-step annotation process, we can clearly see the, clearly see the nano scale domains of uh, AO sun film. And uh, in each uh, nano scale domain, we can see the nanopores uh, inside the film. Uh, if we use a two-step annotation process, we can eliminate the nanoscale domains. And we can see the uh, nanopores uh, distributed in the same film. 
Now let's move on to the first uh, application of this uh, technology. Uh, AO enabled fluorescence, biosensing, and imaging. Here I see a picture of the so-called fluorescent micro bamboos. Uh, each bamboo actually is a micro uh, lines of AO uh, fabricated on the glass substrate. If we apply the fluorescent dyes uniformly on the surface, we can clearly see that the fluorescence signals on the uh, micro AO lines has been uh, have been enhanced dramatically in comparison with the uh, glass surface. We actually also evaluated the fluorescence enhancement of different dyes on the micro patterned AO uh, from A, B, C, D. We found that this AO surface can enhance different fluorescent dyes. Of course, the enhancement factor have some difference, uh, typically from 100 times to 1,000 times. I want to emphasize that all the fluorescence images have been obtained by a co conventional fluorescence microscope. We don't need to you know, have some specific uh, setup to uh, obtain the fluorescence signals. Therefore, it's a big advantage compared to other uh, technology. So to understand the fluorescence enhancement mechanism, we fabricated the uh, uh, surface, uh, uh, you know, AO sample, samples patterns on the glass substrate. For example, here on the glass, we have AO and we have partial AO. Then we apply the fluorescent dye uniformly on the substrate. As you can see that the fluorescent dyes, the fluorescent signals <coughs> on AO and partial have, <coughs> have been enhanced dramatically compared to the glass substrate. In order to verify that the AO is the key for the fluorescence enhancement, we actually uh, you know, removed the AO samples some film from the glass substrate. C and D are the SEM images. Uh, of the surface after the AO has been removed. We still have some dark uh, Then we applied the same concentration of this uh, fluorescent dye on the surface. You can, here is the optic image, and here is the fluorescence image. And uh, we can see that we cannot clear, see any fluorescence uh, signal enhancement here which verifies that the AO is the main reason for the fluorescence enhancement. The possible mechanism for the enhancement, uh, mechanism for the enhancement are summarized as following. Uh, one reason could be the, uh, the because the AO film has a narrow scale that kind of roughness structures like uh, nanopores. The surface scattering effects will cause the redistribution of the electromagnetic fields. Therefore, the fluorescent signal can be enhanced. The feature uh, of the nanoscale patterns, you know, in the AO nano, nanoscale, you know, that can structure in the AO system can uh, cause the so-called the wave guiding property. Uh, therefore, can enhance the intensity of the evaluation field, and this can also enhance the fluorescence uh, uh, signals based on previous, you know, publications. Uh, finally, the aluminum nanoparticles could be steer the AO some film. Uh, the silver nanoparticles uh, can also contribute to the enhancement of the fluorescent signal due to the plasmonic effect. So in order to uh, verify, for example, the evaluation field 
from the L surface is one of the reasons for the fluorescence enhancement. We carried the following experiments. The basic idea is like this. We have uh, the excitation light illuminated on the L surface. Uh, it will generate the evanescent wave. Uh, and its strength decays rapidly from away from the surface. It has certain penetration depths, typically in tens of nanometers to 100 nanometers. So the if we have a herpes DNA, for example, one end is attached, attached to the fluorophore, the other end is immobilized on surface, the surface. At this case, since the fluorophore is attached to the attached to the air surface directly, therefore it has the largest fluorescent signal due to the enhancement of the air surface. Then, if we apply the target DNA, uh, and the target DNA is the target DNA has complete complementary sequence to the uh, you know of the hairpin DNA. They are going to hybrid, hybridize. As a result, it will force the fluorophore here to uh, move away from the surface. So we're going to end up like this. So the fluorophore is here. Because the, the distance increase, therefore the fluorescence signal enhancement will decrease if we have we do have the evaluation wave. So we did an experiment like this. We use this hairpin DNA here, applied on the uh, micro pattern AO surface. As we can see, that the uh, fluorescent signal on the micro pattern AO uh, much higher, the intensity much higher than the glass uh, uh, background. Then we applied the target DNA, this one, this with this sequence, which is complementary to the Herpin DNA here. After 30 minutes incubation, uh, we cannot clearly see any you know, fluorescence signal enhancement. Of course, it still have some background uh, fluorescence signals. Then we did a control experiment. <clears throat> In this case, we changed the target DNA here with this sequence here. Its uh, sequence is not complementary to the herpin DNA. Then we applied this uh, target DNA here and incubated for one hour. As you can see that the fluorescent signal enhancement uh, on the AO patterns shows not a very clear uh, enhanced uh, changes. So were these experiments basically verified that the evaluation uh, field is uh, one of the um, main contributions for the fluorescence enhancement. So we use the, the, uh, this AO uh, sp specific properties for fluorescence enhancement, enhancement for uh, applications. Why is it is used to build up this kind of microchip to monitor the protein A binding with the fluorophore labeled IgG uh, on the AO surface. So if we actually did the experiment, and we found that use this kind of sensor to monitor the binding between IgG and the protein A, we can achieve the detection limit as low as 10 picogram per millimeter square. Use this, uh, Micro pattern AO uh, sense, fluorescent sensors. We also monitored the CR secretion. Uh, specifically for this case, monitored the transforming growth factor beta 1, TGF uh, beta 1, secreted by ITAF cells. Uh, from A, B, C, D, E, F, we basically uh, re reduce the concentration of the purified TGF beta 1. And you can see the fluorescent signal uh, gradually reduced with the lower concentration of the uh, TGF beta 1. And we found that detection limit for this type of sensor to monitor the 
TGF beta 1 is around 10 nanogram per milliliter. Use this sensor, we actually monitor the uh, culture media uh, directly. Uh, and uh, we found that, yes, we can also monitor the cell secretion uh, samples directly. For example, only we have in the culture media, uh, we have eye tough cells, we can clearly monitor its uh, secretion. <coughs> Now, let me, let me move on to the AO-enabled label-free biodetection. So in this case, <clears throat> we look at this uh, you know, diagram. We actually fabricate the micro-patterned AO inside the fiber pro interferometer cavity here in this region, cavity region. So by this way, we can enhance the surface sensor area uh, compared to the conventional fire parallel interferometer. And also we can extend the, the penetration depth of excitation light uh, compared to the conventional uh, plate. Uh, for the conventional fire parallel plate, the, the basically the surface is flat. So by this way, we can amplify the trans optical transducing signals dramatically by monitoring the reflected light uh, uh, from this fire parallel. So we call the nanostructure, we call the nanostructure micro fire parallel interferometer. So we use this uh, nanostructure fire parallel. We monitor the uh, prostate cancer biomarker. For this case, we uh, monitor the uh, FPSA. Before that, we have to do the surface functionalization of the nanopore uh, sun film in the uh, fire power cavity here. We use this uh, uh, basically chemistry to form the uh, surf assembly monolayer on the surface. Then we immobilize the antibody specific for uh, PSA, uh, then we can uh, flow the sample into the chip to, to detect the uh, FPSA. And he, here's just some results. As you can see that uh, if we apply samples without FPSA, we cannot see any interference fringes shift in with the uh, antibody immobilized surface, okay? But if we increase the concentration of SP, F, uh, PSA, we can clearly see the interference fringes shift. So use this type of sensor, we can achieve detection limit uh, of 10 picogram per milliliter, uh, even though we, we, have, we didn't optimize the, this sensor you know, at all. Uh, uh, we also evaluated the specificity of this sensor. Uh, we applied the BSA uh, at a different concentration. As we can clearly see that we cannot observe any uh, changes in uh, compared to the antibody immobilized surface. What this results indicate that this type of sensor ha has a uh, very high sensitivity and a very high specificity. We use this uh, you know, sensor, we actually detect clinic samples. Uh, in this, this slide I show, we also mentioned another type of parmesan uh, optimal for post-state cancer, NEM. And this is the ELISA result to detect the NEM. And this is our sensor to detect uh, the uh, NEM. As you can see, the, the, the units are different, okay? So for the nano sensor, we, we can achieve about 100 uh, times enhancement in terms of the sensitivity. <clears throat> uh, 
And also, we actually detect the, the clinic samples, uh, which we don't know which sample is related to the cancer uh, patient. And we found that for this 10 clinic samples, we can achieve the 100% uh, diagnostic accuracy. We modified this uh, further develop this kind of sensor. We also detect two promising biomarkers for Alzheimer's disease, um, specifically focus on A beta 42 and the tau, and uh, we found that yes, we can uh, detect the uh, these two uh, uh, biomarkers. Uh, you know, in it. In their clinical relevant concentration in CSF, which means that this technology could eventually use it for monitor uh, the uh, biomarkers for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, of course, those samples are uh, can be used to complementary to the uh, neural imaging technique, such as MRI. You know that can. Of uh, diagnostics. Uh, finally, you know, we used the, the, our sensor uh, for the first time. We identified the salicylic acid, SA, uh, optimal. Okay. Uh, so, SA is one of the most important uh, plant hormones. Um, before uh, our research there looks like, like to our base knowledge, we cannot find the available uh, optimal for SE. So what we did is that we combined the so-called Silex, Silex technology and uh, our nano sensor uh, technology together. We identified a very uh, promising candidate uh, for SE optimal. We label that as SAAPTA1. <clears throat> to verify, you know, validate, this uh, is a, uh, you know, very uh, prominent, reliable optimal. We did the following experiments use our nano sensors. We measured the safety and the binding ability of SA optimal. We identified with the four HBA and also the metabolites of SA. Uh, well, this experiment uh, validates the optimal we identified is very reliable. Then we use this uh, optimal for PSA uh, functionalized on our nanosensor, and we measured the SA concentration uh, extracted from plant extracts. And these are measures uh, concentration use our nano sensor. And this measure use HPLC, which is uh, uh, quite expensive and the big equipment in the labs. Okay. So we show similar, you know, uh, results, which means that our, our SC optimal and our nano sensor, uh, which is can achieve the same measurement results. But I want to mention that for our nano sensor and optimal, the cost is much, much lower than use HPLC. Okay. So to summarize my presentation, um, so we use a, one type of nano structured material called the AO, nanoporcelain film. We can fabricate the AO micro patterns on chip. And then we can use this kind of chip. We can achieve, achieve the label free biodetection, uh, for many different, you know, uh, bio, biochem, biomolecules. One example is that for the biomarker cancer, uh, for, uh, prostate cancer, we can achieve to 10 picogram milliliter detection limit at least. And for the same material, we can use this type of material 
for fluorescence sensor, the, this type of material can enhance the fluorescence signal dramatically uh, from 100 times to 1,000 times, depending on what type of fluor fluorescent dyes we use. Finally, I'd like to uh, thank my founding sources and all my graduate students and all my collaborators for the past uh, years. Okay, that's my presentation. Thanks very much.